it's Nancy and I'm here today to do something super fun with you. I'm going to be doing a little experiment on one of the elements of art. One of those elements of art which are the building blocks of art. Very important, the line. You use it every day. You draw your name with it, you draw little circles and boxes around things, you line up as you walk to, uh, to the checkout stand at the grocery store, lots of lines. Um, we're going to be using lines in an interesting way. We're going to be making Moroccan-themed line rugs. So Morocco, where is Morocco exactly? Let me just move that. Morocco is in Northern Africa and the Berber people live there. Now the Berbers are really, really cool people. They're very much uh, removed from the ways of the world for up until about a hundred years ago. So they didn't have TVs or computers or laptops or newspapers even. They had to uh, rely on a lot of, uh, basically on verbal communication, talking to each other and telling stories. Um, they made rugs in ways that were uh, important to them, not just because they're pretty or to use on the floor like we might, but they actually considered them prized possessions. Prized possessions, like something you might really love, like your motorcycle or your tennis racket or your dog, okay? Things like that that make you feel connected and good that you like to share with each other. So they didn't have a written language at all. So they actually used, this is up until 100 years ago, they do now. Um, but so they used images and symbols in their rugs to tell stories and myths of their culture. Culture is uh, oh, how we are in the world and what's important to us. Not the yogurt, not frozen yogurt. Okay, so patterns uh, actually were also used. You can tell a lot about uh, you can tell a lot about how someone might have been feeling when they wove the rug. You can see a woman here. This is a Berber woman who was uh, weaving there. She's sitting on the floor. Looks pretty comfortable, but quite focused. Um, and she's using the, the basically the wool yarn to go back and forth inside of these little strings in order to make the rugs. Very slow process. Makes you appreciate the rug you're standing on maybe right now. This is an example of um, texture and color and pattern that they used in the wool rug in this case. Um, and you might notice that in some cases the patterns change very abruptly or very suddenly. And that is actually also showing something important. It's showing life events like births and illness and marriages and deaths. You know, all the things that we mark our lives by. So when you see that in a rug, know that somebody was going through something and they decided to put it into the rug for that reason. There's also something that is pretty neat about the rugs. The colors are chosen for very specific or very purposeful reasons. Um, an example of that is red, which symbolizes strength and protection. Who doesn't need that? Blue symbolizes wisdom. Yellow represents eternity. Mm. And green stands for peace. Very cool. I thought green stood for recycling, but I was wrong. All right, so let's get started with our line rug. I'm going to show you a sample of what I like to do for my line rug. Um, and then we're going to get started talking about lines. a couple of other samples of some line rug ideas. This is our inspiration picks. These are really cool. Lots of changing patterns going on here. You can imagine there must have been something pretty big going on in that person's life. And now we are going to talk about lines. Now, you probably have a few ideas about lines already. We talked about a straight line. Now, I'm wondering if at home you might come up with some ideas of your very own. If you want to, and it's okay with your parents, go ahead and just shout them out whenever you feel them. I always like to do that in the classroom. So, I, I find that the next and most kind of 
mellow line is the wavy line. And the wavy line looks a little bit like sort of a gentle ripple on the ocean or maybe the swimming pool. A zigzag has lots of energy and excitement and fun to it. You can make little shallow zigzags. You can make big zigzags. Whatever you feel, this is your line. Loopy lines are next, and loopy lines are super fun, and they are never, never, never boring, I find. They can also be big and small. Drippy lines, my favorite, ends up looking very, very cool later on. I'll show you that. Well, now there's another line that you probably have seen. You've probably even drawn this before. This is the wavy line, and a wavy line looks like the ocean has a little curve on the top and it goes swoops back down and continues. They can change in shape just like waves in the ocean. They're not all the same size, are they? Whatever you want to do, this is yours. The castle line is a super fun one. Up and down and up and down. It has a nice sharp angles. Could also be jack-o'-lantern teeth line if you want to call it something different. The scalloped line, very fun. It looks a little bit like the ocean line, but, or the wave line, but it's just a little bit more, kind of little points and swoops down and point and swoops down and point. And finally, because no lines are complete without the crazy line, you gotta get a little crazy sometimes. So I decided to make it my own type of line. And it's just a little wild and wiggly, and it does whatever it wants. It could be jagged, it could be loopy, it could be a combination. You get to decide what your choice of lines are. These are just ideas. You can make whatever lines you want. Let's get started. Now, again, my fun line extravaganza. I had such a good time with this that I wanted to make another one today with you. So I brought a blank piece of paper. We'll talk about that later. So now we get to use some of our line options. We've got some fun things we just talked about. We have all sorts of them. I'm going to start with a Sharpie. Now, sometimes you might feel more comfortable with your pencil. You may feel more comfortable going straight to colored pencils. Whatever you have. If you have crayons, you can decide what works best for you. All right, so I'm just going to go right across the top. Notice that I'm going to be drawing in a horizontal way. Now, I'm not drawing down, which is vertical. I'm going to be drawing a horizontal line. And I don't want to just do a boring old straight line because I started off with that. I think I'd like to do something maybe wavy. So I'm using my arm, kind of trying to tell my hand, calm down, don't get too crazy. Make everything similar. Well, that looks pretty good. I was a little higher here and a little lower here, but I'm not worried about it. It's all going to look good in the end. Now, I'll have that line already, and if I did another one of those, it would look a little bit like a road. Uh, if I did a straight line, it would make mountains. If I did a zigzag line, it would be energy against softness. Let's think, what do I want my rug to look like? This is when you get to start thinking about what would your lines be. I'm going to make a loopy line. Trying to go horizontally across without running into the first line. Oh, oh, I had to adjust miss it, but it's okay. I like it. So we have a little kind of a, a little excited curviness going on. Maybe it's time for something kind of straight or angular. Let's just try a straight line. Oh, I love drawing. Maybe you do too. It always helps me feel relaxed. In fact, if you're noticing yourself feeling a little bit tense, or maybe uh, somebody's got the TV on next door and you want some quiet, just tuck yourself away in a nice quiet space. Pick some place so you can stretch out and be comfortable. Here's a castle line. If you forget to breathe like I just did. <sighs> Ever do that? It's kind of weird. Yep, I catch myself doing that all the time. But as soon as I remember, I just take a nice deep breath. What do I need now? Let's see. 
Let's just, this is just so much fun. I'm gonna do some waves. The waves are just kind of C shapes with little tails. And I'm not gonna run off the edge. I'm just gonna stop there and see how that looks. Now, hmm, thinking about composition of my line rug, feeling like it's a little bit wild. I'm gonna do another straight line, trying to be horizontal. Trying is the keyword. Nice. That looks pretty good. I can tell it's horizontal because it's running parallel to that one up there. So I'm feeling like maybe some more, mm, num, num, num. let's see what other way, let's see what other lines I had. Am I forgetting? Scalloped. We need some scallops. Oh yeah. Well, that worked out nicely. Oop, I'm going to go all the way to the edge. If you're drawing at home on your countertop or your mom's really nice table, try to put something underneath you. Like I have this mat under there so you don't draw on the table with a Sharpie because Sharpies are forever. Finally, I'm getting close to the end. I gotta be really thoughtful about which lines I'm gonna use now. I know that I have loopies and wavies. I would like to do maybe another repeat of something. I think I'm gonna do another castle. See, this one's a little farther apart. A little bigger, a little wider. Still looks just as fun. I'm um, looking over there at my list. Maybe something I haven't thought of before. Ah, I know. I'm going to do sort of a drippy line. Sort of a wiggly, wiggly line. Maybe the path of a river from scene overhead. Oh, yeah. Feeling this one. Ooh, try and relax those arms. Keep your body feeling good. Art doesn't have to hurt. Okay, so I think this is looking really, really slick. Um, at this point, I'm going to take a pause, put the cap on my Sharpie. You know, I always recommend that, you know me. Um, that way they don't dry out and get sad. And I'll let you have a chance to work on your lines for your line rug. Try and remember to go across. Now, I did my line rug in the vertical paper position, so that's going to make a nice rug uh, to hang up on the wall or put on the floor afterward, maybe. Um, and when we come back, then we will go ahead and add some color. Welcome back. I am sharpening my pencil. Now you might discover that your pencils have been used if you've got some colored pencils that you're using uh, and that they've been kind of worn down and the tips not so not so pointy anymore. That's a good time to take a break and give your pencil some love. Um, this is my mom's uh, wonderful old pencil sharpener works great. You may have others. You might have one that's electric or that you have to crank whatever you can come up with is good. Uh, if you have to ask your parents to help you sharpen them, please do. I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. You might have some crayons to use uh, for this part of the project. I like uh, just the Crayola. This is a 24 pack. I got it at the art supply store. Another option would be using markers. These are super fun. Maybe I'll use markers today. That's an option. And you might have your colored pencils. Let's take a chance and do, get rid of those. Now that I've sharpened all those pencils so nicely, I'm gonna bust open my Crayola pack. Any brand will work. You can use Sharpies. I always like to just have everything at the ready. Um, now, you have black, and don't forget that's a color too, so that would be fun to use. That adds definition and uh, gives you a little bit of um, kind of pop too. So I'm going to start by just adding color to wherever I feel it needs it. When I, feel, when I say feel I need it, you know, it's like a good thing that an artist just knows. and. Even if you don't think you're an artist, you'll find that you just know where things go. So trust that. I'm going to start farthest away from me because if I start coloring here and I keep going up and up and up, I'm going to have a lot of pen 
all over the, um, the heel of my hand, and that's this part. And maybe that doesn't bother you. Now, to try and stay in the lines. Oh, the trick of an artist. Um, it is never easy, even when you are older, like me. <laughs> and sometimes it's easier to turn your page, whatever you need to do. I'm doing pretty well right now, holding the page up and down so you can see it at home. I see a little holiday there that I want to cover up. Holiday again, if you forgot or didn't know yet. I don't mean like your trip to Mexico. I mean a little white spot that's showing on the paper where the pen or the crayon or the paint or whatever it is you're using didn't cover. Now, I don't know if you are like me and you tend to kind of get really into coloring, but sometimes your arm can get really sore or sometimes you can even stop breathing. It's so weird. So just pay attention to yourself. Like right now I can kind of feel my shoulders a little sore because I was coloring a lot yesterday. So I'm just gonna remind my body, you don't have to be all tight and tense. You can just chill out. Sometimes it's nice to take a break and get a glass of water or a cup of tea. Whoop, I ran off the edge. Okay, I tend to try and color, just the way I color with colored pencils too, I tend to try and color um, in the same direction. There's some more holidays. And that gives you, if you do have lines, they're all going the same way because where the pen runs over another part of where the pen was already, um, it does a, kind of gets a darker line, capping. Ugh. Capping my pen. Next color, please. What do I think would look really great with blue? I'm thinking some complementary color orange action. What do I mean by complementary colors? Colors that are across each other from themselves on the color wheel. That tells you those colors pop together, okay? You might not say that the green and the blue are that uh, exciting next to each other. They get along better. They're called analogous colors. More on that later. Um, but for right now, let's try a complementary color. Orange next to the blue. Oh yeah, I'm digging that. You could also use a yellow. It would have a certain feel too. And I'm going to go around the little oval goobers. I'm also kind of coloring fast because I don't want you to get bored. Now I can color fast, sort of, because I've colored for a lot of years. However, if you're not used to coloring as much, go as slow as you need to. Oh, there's that arm getting a little sore again. Take a break if you need to. Got a lot of time when you're working on your art to think about things. What you might be thinking about, what to eat for lunch. My stomach just growled. That's how I can tell. You can pay attention to what's going on with you. Think about your thoughts and kind of pay attention to what you're what you're processing. Maybe you had a argument with your brother or sister. Maybe somebody was hogging the bathroom again. That always happens. Get out of there. My sister always hogged the phone. It's probably gonna be mad at me that I told you that. But back in the day when we didn't have our own cell phones, we had to use the same house phone that was attached to the wall with a cord. Yes, back in the day. Anyway, she was always on that blah, blah, blah. So if you're feeling mad or frustrated, coloring is such a good way to get rid of that. Sometimes you just want to go 
scribble. Not on this though, try and do a nice job filling in the spaces between all your lines. I'm almost done with the orange, gonna bust out the final bit. And da -da 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 -da. if you run into the color of up above, you may see some bleeding. There's a little bit of blue in the orange, not stressing out about that at all. Now I have a really fun opportunity. I know that I can actually use another color inside of those ovals, and I can do another color down here and down here. I'm kind of excited. I'm thinking that green. Green is one of those colors that when you use it, just makes you so happy. It makes me happy when I use green. All colors are wonderful, but I tend to really love the blue and the green. Not so much a pink fan. You might like pink, though. Now, I'm still being careful. I want to be sure that I have, oh, enough time to color. If I'm feeling rushed, it might end up looking a little rushed. That's all right. The more you do it, the better you'll get at all the different techniques that it takes to make art. It's really just practice. Okay, so now, aha, feeling good. Got one more color choice in there. I am feeling the love of red right now. Now I have an option. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and turn my paper. It's not really cheating. But I'm gonna take my red on the wide edge the wide edge of the marker that we have here. These are the ultra clean washable markers. You're welcome, mom and dad. Um, and these can come off your body if you get them on you. Not always your clothes, so be careful. But there's a point and then there's a long kind of fat side that makes, if you lay it down the way I'm holding it, you kind of lay the color all the way down. I'm just gonna make stripes. Try not to run off the side too much. That's techniques. You'll discover what works for you. It's all just playing around, experimenting. I could also hold it like this. And here, I'll do it up here so you can see. Okay. Now when I get to the edge where it meets up with the other color that I just drew, I may just want to not do this hand position because it can be hard to control. This is good for filling in large areas. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn it this way and holding it using the wider part of it. I'm going to just color in. Now this is looking a little wild because I can see all the lines in my red from where I've run over. Um, another line that I laid down and it gets to be a little a little wild. If that bugs you, just do it a little more carefully. I'm not being bothered by that. You can see what I mean. There's a little bit of that. And if you don't like it, you can go back over it and give it kind of a smooth out. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I love coloring. Okay, my friends, feeling good. Looking for some little holidays. Which are those little white spots that we talked about. I'm going to draw a little bit on the edge. Okay, I feel like it's a good time for me to pause while you have a chance to pick out some of your own colors. Um, choose what you like, what feels good for you. If you're curious about how things will look together, you can always use a little scratch piece of paper on the side and try out some ideas. You also don't have to just do one color in each of the sections. You get to decide. I could have chosen in my little ovally loops, I could have chosen a rainbow of colors. So you go for it, feel good about what you choose because it's your choice and it's your art. All right, so, so much fun today. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for learning about lines and having a little fun and experimentation. I hope that you enjoyed coloring and I hope that you're gonna be having a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.